Welcome to careforcustomers.com, the call center management series. Today's session is on voice analytics within a contact center. So just an overview of the voice analytics machine. Four major components to it. Uh, first of all is the telecoms unit. And this is the area of the machine that connects to your ACD or your PBX. Basically pulls down the recorded conversations uh, that happen between your customers and your agents. Once that's done, the voice processing unit, undoubtedly the most important unit in the entire analytics machine, uh, decodes those calls and takes those electronic WAV files and converts them basically into words. And those words are then passed over to the database and index portion of the machine so that uh, all this information can be captured and stored in a usable fashion. And then finally, the reporting engine is the part of the device that actually is allows you to connect and pull out information that's important to your particular requirements. So let's take a look at a typical setup in a contact center. So we'll have our customer uh, place a call into the contact center. And once that call is connected, the ACD says, oh, I have a, an available agent for you, connects the customer to the agent. And at that time, signals to the voice analytics machine that a call's in progress. And then the telecoms unit says, let me connect that to that call and start capturing the information that is being uh, passed between the agent and the customer. So we'll zoom in on that a little bit. And this is where the telecoms component sends the recorded information over to the voice processing unit. And basically, we'll send it over as a WAV file. Uh, uh, within machine language. And the voice processing unit's task is to take a look at that file, analyze it, so go through the entire conversation, and pick out the words and the phrases that the database uh, component is looking for. So here I've put 14 different examples of what could be captured in a particular call. And these are just simply examples. You could capture 400 different things. You can capture, you know, less than less than 10, whatever is specific to your particular environment. So database says, I'm looking for these 14 things. Let's just go through a couple of them. Um, pretty uh, easy to understand. Agent name. So I want to hear uh, what agent is answering this call. Uh, was there an offer for assistance? Uh, was there a phrase phrase in the call that was a, that was represented a security challenge to the customer? Um, did the customer at any time say, I understand what you're talking about? Uh, was there an offer to sell the customer uh, a particular service or product? Uh, important, were there any swear words used in the conversation? Uh, did the customer at any time say, I'd like to, uh, I want to speak to a manager or request that to speak to a manager, that type of activity. So the voice analytics machine says, okay, voice processing, tell the database index what you found on this call. And so it goes through the calls, listens to it, and captures all of that information and hands it over to the database index. So you can see an example of some of the output that could be there. And then the database index has to then capture all of these calls that are get processed in a day. So you can just imagine literally thousands of calls are processed every day and that information has to be captured, indexed, and then stored within uh, the data storage uh, component of the voice analytics machine. And then this is where the reporting engine takes over. So you would typically have a analyst who works with the voice analytics machine in order to take the requests that are coming in from the call center managers or supervisors, uh, requests that might even come from the marketing department. If there is a, a, a product that they're trying to sell, they want to understand what's going on in the conversation. So those requests come in from the analyst. The analyst is going to connect to the voice analytics machine, specifically the reporting engine, and send those requests up and the reporting engine is going to feed back that information to the analyst. And of course, the output of all of that is uh, specific user reports that meet the requests that were originally asked of the analyst. So that's a good overview of how the machine works. And let's talk now about some of the uses within the contact center. 
So first and foremost, in no real particular order, first call resolution, I think, is, a, is an obvious one. So if you're looking to improve processes within your contact center and customers are calling you multiple times for the same issue, you want to improve your first call resolution. A voice analytics machine is going to help you do that because you're going to look for phrases such as customers saying, this is the third time I've called about this issue, or how come this my service goes out every Monday afternoon, phrases like that. Legal issues or, or requests or even the mention of the word legal or lawyer, very important in some industries, uh, specifically, uh, say, the food industry, or customers calling in about uh, a foreign object in their bag of potato chips, and they're going to say, I'm going to contact my lawyer. That is obviously something that you need to escalate up within the organization so it can get addressed very quickly. Sales validation, as we talked about, you know, if you if an agent goes through a series of um, of uh, product offerings, uh, features, benefits, and the customer says, "Yep, yeah, I understand. I, I'd like to purchase that." Great way to validate your sales. Good, good device to test new processes. If you have a specific number of agents who are who, who are designed to implement a new process or test a new process out with with customers, you can pick out their calls and the pro and the items that are going on in that conversation to help you improve that process. Check for customer satisfaction. If one of the questions an agent is, you know, have I satisfied all of your requests today? An agent and the customer is saying, yes, you have, or I'm very satisfied, or you've helped me out an awful lot. That kind of phraseology can be captured as well. It can confirm compliance, making sure that all of your agents are uh, using the, the appropriate compliance processes so you can confirm that with voice analytics. And really virtually any number of different uses within your contact center. So whatever you can capture from a phrase or a word perspective, um, this voice analytics device or machine can help you uh, with that. So let's talk about some of the positives of voice analytics within a contact center. It provides complete visibility to everything that is said in the course of a day. So you've got, you, you probably have a quality assurance team who will listen to, you know, tens or a hundred calls a day. Uh, think about what they're doing and multiply that with every call within your contact center. Voice analytics can give you that kind of information. So very powerful can pinpoint problems in processes, procedures, or customer understanding. An example here is if some of your calls are outsourced to, um, a, let's say, an offshore call center, and you're worried about uh, the language capability of those agents, so you can ask the voice analytics machine to say, you know, give me every call where the customer has said, uh, excuse me or pardon me, can you slow down a little bit? I don't quite understand you. Any of those phrases? It can pull those out of each and every call, so it'll help you give you a better understanding of how big that particular issue is. Obviously, ident identifies compliance gaps that we've talked about uh, on the last slide, and it can reduce staff. Uh, you fix all of these processes, or you you, um, you you pinpoint some problems that you're having within your contact center that will obviously uh, improve your efficiency, which means you can reduce some staff. So it's a positive as long as you're not the one being reduced. Let's talk about some of the drawbacks for voice analytics. Because of its total capability to see everything, uh, that gives you a level of insight or power that could actually lead to analysis paralysis. So. I listed just 14 things that you could look for. If you had 100 things that you were looking for from a voice analytics machine, the question is, then what would you do with all that information? How would you manage it? How would you improve your contact center? So you could just say, geez, what is the most important thing? So you, you could be paralyzed by so much data, and that's important to, to know that, and so you can manage it appropriately. Obviously, it's going to increase your costs, your, your, your capital costs, your, your monthly budget in the sense that you're going to have additional maintenance on top of that and you're really going to have to hire more support staff because you're going to have someone who's going to interface with the machine and then you're probably going to have more folks having to work the fixes that the that the voice analytics machine is is pushing out saying here's a problem here's a problem so in order to improve those processes quicker you're going to have to have more staff actually uh, 
be with working within your contact center to uh, to make those changes. And, and frankly, it may tell you something that you already know. So if you've got a hunch or a suspicion, or you know QA has uh, told you about some of these things. Uh, the drawback is, uh, geez, I kind of already know that. But by that time, you might have spent a few hundred thousand dollars on a voice analytics machine. So be careful of that. And then finally, it could damage the culture uh, in the sense that if you start to go uh, go after your agents for every single one of these issues, uh, they could get pretty uh, tired and fed up uh, with that kind of approach. So you've got to make sure you don't damage your culture uh, with a voice analytics machine. And then let's talk about what it doesn't do, because I think this is important as well. So it doesn't make your agents smarter. It doesn't make them nicer, more empathetic to your customers. It doesn't make them technical superstars or wonderful collectors or sales experts. That is going to come from managing and coaching your agents. It doesn't, again, teach them uh, the correct process to use. It only identifies what process they didn't use or the incorrect process. So again, coaching, teaching, managing is going to help fix that. It doesn't disable them from hanging up on customers, and that's an important point because if that's if you if that's going to be one of your your, your things, you're going to stop hangups. A voice analytics machine is not going to do that in the sense that think about it today is that most calls within a contact center are recorded, yet agents are always being sort of found out by uh, when they're hanging up on customers. So agents already know that all the calls are recorded. So if they're hanging up now, uh, the voice analytics machine is not going to stop them from doing that in the future. Uh, it doesn't improve bad processes. So customers are calling you for for uh, reasons that, you know, some process that's out there or some procedure. Uh, it's not going to stop those customers from calling. It's not going to improve that process. People are going to improve the process. And then it's not going to improve the culture of your contact center. So again, we talked about it where it could damage your culture. This is not going to necessarily improve it. Again, you have to manage that improvement within the contact center. So that's our overview of voice analytics within a contact center. I want to thank you for watching. Hopefully some of this has helped you.